That won't work. The fish are too pressured. They only want live bait here. <laughs> Many had their doubts, but when we set our goals for this trip, we decided that one way or another, we were going to make them happen. Using a new product by No Live Bait Needed, we were going to catch as many tuna as possible. And when we were done, we were going after the biggest, baddest fish we could find. This adventure reminded me that I have so much to learn, and it reminded me how much I love eating tuna. So join us for the next 24 hours as we chase the monsters of Louisiana. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Venice, Louisiana. I am here with an incredible crew. I'm gonna introduce you guys to everyone after we get the boat loaded. We're loading up everything to spend, what, like 24 hours? Yeah, something something like, that. like that? 24 hours on the water, chasing some absolute monster fish, and the fishing has been incredible. So let's get the boat loaded up. Right here we have my boy, yeah. Joe VT. What's if you up, watch guys? fish on YouTube, you've probably seen his videos before. It's my favorite time of year. I'll That's tell you sick. what, it's big fish season. Fog's been rolling in. Big fish are everywhere. They're on the shelf, they're at the rigs. You go to the rigs, the same fish that we were catching in uh, April and May that were 20 to 40 pounds, they eat so much and they grow so fast. All those fish are between 60 and 80 pounds. You I have, didn't know that. Yep. That's sick. Oh yeah, you're hooking, you're hooking a fish close to 100 pounds almost every single day and every few days you're having a shot. I had a fish over uh, 125 pounds. And then once in a blue moon out there, you'll get a fish 150 to 200. So it is my favorite time of year. I saw this guy talking to his GoPro this morning. And I was like, man, I don't have enough energy. Like I need to pump my numbers up, man. The goal of this trip is to catch a monster tuna on a lure. Not just any lure, a lure made by this guy right here. What's going on? This is Brandon, one of the owners of No Lie Bait Needed or NLBN. Are you ready, my friend? Hey, this, how's it going? This is Jose, or Joey, as uh, I call him. And he's getting ready. He's got a very new, special, a very special new jig head made by No Live Bait Needed with a monster BKK hook on it that I am stoked to try out. I'm going to put as much pressure as I can on that thing. I'm going to try and break it. We also have my longtime friend, Ben. What's well, shaking? I don't know if you've ever been in a YouTube video before, but we've been fishing together so. from a long time before YouTube. And this guy got married last year. He was supposed to come up here to catch tunas for his bachelor party. Got canceled because of weather, but now I think I have a feeling he's gonna stroke a monster the today. Stars align, the think, stars align. I think it's time. Camera, but I want you guys to see this. <laughs> I want you guys to see how real fishermen prep their food. You go to Chick-fil-A and you order 21 chicken sandwiches at a time, and I'm gonna start with one of these out for breakfast this morning. I'll fire it up. I just want to know the best part about this is it's Sunday and we're getting to enjoy Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. So we pull out here, we can actually see the gulf now, and there's like a hundred different rigs. Joe said that the little ones do what? So in here, they're natural gas, there's a little bit of oil, but the small ones in here, this is East Bay where we are. The small ones are compressors that regulate the pressure to all of the rigs offshore all the way out to the floaters. If you look at a map, you will be able to see all the pipelines that go out to almost 10,000 feet. I gotta zoom in a little bit wow. to see. All of these small rigs right here, they regulate the pressure going all the way out there. So that's how the oil is moved. It's all via pipeline. There is some natural gas. The way you tell um, natural gas rigs from regular oil rigs is they are separated. They have catwalks because natural gas obviously is a much volatile, more volatile uh, substance than uh, regular crude oil. 
So to keep the crew safe and everything else safe, all the equipment, it's separated out with big catwalks and the floaters offshore, those big flares, those big, you know, 50, 60, 70, sometimes 100 foot fires, that's when they burn off that volatile substance um, to cut it from the crude oil that they're pumping back to shore. So everything's connected out here. It's really cool. I think I'm just not going to talk to the camera all day and I'm just going to have Joe make my YouTube video yep, and I'll just great. edit it later. Yeah, as long as I don't have to edit the thing, I'll be good with that. So one of the first things we have to do is load up on any types of live baits that we can. We're actually crushing the horn bellies right now. Well, the boys are. I'm flying the drone. And you can see we're in this giant field of just oil rigs, gas rigs, not like anything I've ever seen. This place is just weird. Like I've never considered horn bellies a bait, but they love using them here. And we're gonna have a giant well full of them as live chum. And maybe, maybe I use a live bait. I don't know, just don't tell the owners of no live bait needed. Just a straight up wall of red. That mark you guys see, that is all bait, my friends. Great bait here, terrible bait in Florida. Now there's another version of these guys called leather jacks that are a little bit skinnier. <laughs> yep. And they're skinnier and when those things prick you with that bottom horn, you feel it. You feel that venom. I've always called me a look down type of guy. Not gonna keep this guy for bait, but uh, this is a look down, very similar to the moonfish that we catch back in Florida. Bam, let him go. Oh, look, it worked, buddy. I got me a beautiful specimen. Cannot be used for bait. Check that guy out. You know you're in a place with a ton of red snappers if you're catching them on sabikis. These little juvie guys, you keep feeling, you think you got a really, you know, a stringer full of bait and you actually only got one of these. But munch of the sabikis, obviously way too small to keep, but uh, pretty crazy how thick they are here. Yeah, there's def they're definitely healthy. All right, we got enough bait for now. Might catch a little bit more offshore, but we're headed out to do what we came here to do. Try and catch some giant tuna. Got a couple hour run, maybe take a quick snooze in the bean bag be out there. As we continue to push offshore, we pass by multiple oil rigs and a bunch of different wildlife, but then something huge caught our eye. Something I had never seen before. This is a massive pod of whales. Now, I purposefully didn't look up what species these are because I want you guys to figure that out for me. So if you know off the top of your head, go ahead and comment that down below. And if you have a guess, comment that down below as well. But I will say this was amazing to see and they only hung around with us for maybe 45 seconds. So we got these quick drone shots, then they sounded down and we were back on our way to the fishing grounds. Okay, so we've just pulled up to this giant, what they call floater. These are giant oil rig type structures that aren't actually connected to the bottom. They just kind of have some chain and some anchors to keep them relatively where they need to be to be able to extract oil. But what, here, but what we are here for is the tunas that this area attracts. It's gonna attract a bunch of live bait. It's gonna attract a bunch of different species. We see plenty of dolphins. We see some skipjack tunas blowing up. So let's see if we can throw one of these lures out and maybe get bit by a tuna. We're seeing a few marked on the depth finder, so which is luck. There's some fish in this area, about 100 foot down. So I'm gonna drop this heavier. This is the new jig head. This is a three ounce, the eight inch straight tail on it. This bay, this bay boat is hooked up actually. Well, Joey just got a bite. We don't know how big the fish was, but it had us all fired up. Oh, I just got whacked, dude. That was a bite for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
What we got, Joe? Blackfin. Blackfin. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> you thought you thought you were gonna get him for a second. <laughs> Ew. There she is, girls. Oh, look at that mullet getting. That's the live bait, isn't it? Yeah. No, the live bait, the line looks like it's under the boat. Okay. All right, we got Brandon hooked up on something. Possibly a black fin. Possibly a juvie yellow. We're hoping he's gonna put his big boy pants on and pull this thing away from the sharks. Uh -oh. oh, he still got him. Nice. Stop him in his tracks. Come on now. Nice play. Yeah, boy. Whoa! Oh! Oh! No way. Afraid you off. Yep. I didn't see the lure. It was in his mouth. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. It's free. Yeah. Damn. Unsurprisingly, the middle of the day fishing wasn't that great. We knew it was going to pick up as the sun got lower, so we just continued fishing around. And we continued to mark fish under this drill ship, which I erroneously called a floater earlier. This is actually a floater. Anyways. We bumped from drill ship to floater. We tried a bunch of different spots and just really didn't pick up that many fish during the middle of the day. But it did get me thinking about all the stuff that you could catch out here. You can catch things like wahoo, especially this time of year in the winter. You can catch tons of these blackfin tuna, which are just a smaller cousin to the bigger species out here. We have the ju juvenile yellowfin tuna like you're seeing here. And we also have big eye tuna. These are kind of rare in the Gulf, but I did get this stud last year. So you know they're around and they can get every bit as big as a yellowfin. They can get, you know, in the 200 pound class. This one's about buck 50. Then you have the true jumbo yellowfins. You can find fish over 200 pounds like this one here. Man, it's just crazy what you can find out here. And it just always has my imagination working. This time also gave me a chance to talk to the captain of our boat, his name's Bob Hovey. He owns Louisiana Blue Water Charter Co. Now, we filmed a clip together. Not sure what happened. I guess I didn't hit record like an idiot. But Bob is super knowledgeable, and he was a great time to be around. Taught us a lot of stuff. Um, just overall, an awesome captain to fish with. Would definitely recommend it. I'll have his stuff linked down below. And last but not least, we had NLBN's cameraman, which I will introduce to you guys right now. We have my man Trevor. We have fished together before. He's a big kayak angler. I went over to Tampa to do a little kayak fishing on our natives, and uh, I had a heck of a time. But now, Trevor is going to be documenting this whole day for no live bait needed. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just yeah. like it was your first time kayak fishing. Exactly. Today's my first time tuna fishing. Exactly. So, dude, we're getting well rounded out here. As the sun started to get lower and lower, we saw more and more activity on the surface and on the depth finder until finally, to my left, Brandon hooked up to what sounded like a real one. Yeah? There you go. Woo! Oh, got the hook set, baby. Uh huh. That's a real one. Oh. I watched the tip with really like boink. All right, we bumped from one drill ship slash oil rig, whatever the one of these giant things to another giant thing to another giant thing. We've been marking stuff, but this is really the only place that we hooked up to a real fish. So we're back here. We're gonna give it another shot. Still a ton of dolphins, and Joe thinks the dolphins are uh, a terrible sign. So, we'll find out what happens. We'll see what happens. 
as the light gets lower, the bite's gonna get better. The last trip I did, um, fishing in a similar area when I was out of Alabama, the fish really chewed at night. It's honestly one of the craziest bites I've ever seen. So I think that's what we're in for tonight. Fingers crossed. Ben just caught the first yellow of the day on the pink straight tail. Choked nice job. it. Way to go, boys. Nice job. All right, so look. Way to bring the ice. Towards disbelief of what just happened. Literally, I lurked back behind the boat and thought of the dolphin for a second. And there was easily three, four hundred pound blue marlin. I don't know how big they are actually. It was just a, the, it was a, a really, giant, really big fish. A giant blue marlin freaking out. I'm like, that thing looks like it's hooked. And then I see Joe boat up in the back. I'm like, what is going on, man? So those are blue marlin. Oh my gosh. On the straight tail. On the straight tail. Oh my gosh. Off to throw to the right. Oh! Oh! Hard left. Right over here. Get a boy. Get a boy. And, and straight ahead. Just to the right a little bit. Same waking. Oh, there. Oh, bitch. Clapped it. Oh, oh yeah! Yeah! There you go. What do you got? Tuna. 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 We threw to the right a little yeah, bit. We, we saw him waking on top. Over here. Look, hop down off the bow. I'm gonna go underneath you. Up high or no? Yeah, up high. That's the one we're after. Watch the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Let me get out of your way, guys. Get everything you can to keep these fish separated from each other. One should be in the very bow and one should be in the back. Alright, I'm gonna start walking to the back B. Oh look, 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 look! Watch out! Go, 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 go! I'm gonna get close, Cap. Oh, God! Oh! oh. God, on the three inch! On oh. the three inch, baby! Hey, I'm right here, Cap. I got color. Woo! Oh, somebody's close. Guys, you gotta keep them separated with this braid. Right here. Bail open. In the boat. Yellow fin. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely chomped it. There we go. That is a beautiful yellow fin tuna on the eight inch straight tail. My first time throwing these baits for these fish, but that was such a sick eat. We saw multiple fish chasing flying fish on top. I saw some fish waking and I told Brandon, I was like, yo, let's cast right there. Sure enough, we both hammer a nice solid fish. This guy, <laughs> I'm stoked, man. I don't, I don't know what else you could ask for. Awesome fish, beautiful sunrise, perfect conditions. And there's some giants out here. We're seeing fish over hundred pounds come out of the water. So we'll consider this 
an appetizer and hopefully we can find a real giant but with giant in the boat but man i'm i'm stoked look at these things it's like a little airplane underwater <laughs> saw some jumbos we're hauling butt see some big ones coming out of the water this is chaos right now How's that for a sunset bite? That was chaotic, my friends. Everywhere. Starboard or starboard bow. 45 degrees. Watch out, watch out. Heads up, I'm going up. Go, go. Three inch over here. <laughs> He's like. That's a pretty big bait, right? That's a pretty big bait. Three inches? Three, three inches is solid, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. I lost your mic. Your mic just. Do you need me to do anything? I don't know. I don't know what happened. If it died or if it just unplugged okay. or something. Ready? Let's get out of here. They're all up in there. You guys, you saw the marlin on top? It's coming up. Just reel. Just reel. Okay. Just reel. Oh. Oh. Porpoise. Porpoise. Oh, porpoise. I told you. You get back the lift. As the sun set below the horizon, we decided to move to a new spot. Now, there was tons of water to fish, so we just needed to find fish that were willing to eat. And man, oh man, it was lit up out here, y'all. It was honestly amazing to see, and it is nothing like I've ever seen before. We got us a little sandwich making crew. Woo. On duty. Woo. Hey, my friend, you, you could just make one more. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset. So whoever wants one, put, her, put your bread down. Made, made one. We are eating good out here. A couple yellow fins in the box. Headed to a new spot. Cheers, no complaints. Cheers. 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 Woo. Whoa. Okay. Just pulled up to a new rig. Lit up like a Christmas tree. We're not seeing a ton of activity yet, so we got some baits out behind the boat, kind of trolling around, seeing what's going on. Not a lot of current. We definitely want to see a little bit of current. It's going to get some bait flowing through here. Going to get a bunch of stuff up and working, but we'll see what happens. We got a whole night of fishing. I'm fired up because this can be absolutely legendary. All right, let's see what we can do. We are probably 200 feet down, maybe more. Gotten a couple bumps. Fish just aren't eating it all the way yet, but we'll see. Got a lot of confidence. There's a lot of marks down there. Oh, I just got bit. Go. I just got bit. No, no. I'm a fall. Mm. <laughs> Yo, buddy. Come on. These things are ripping down. Is that my camera? Oh, thank you. So, man, I'll tell you what. Since we pulled up to this one, the fish are definitely bigger. I don't know how big this one is. Sometimes it's just really hard to tell. But he definitely ripped a ton of drag and now he's actually going to start giving me some business there he goes getting heavy again oh come on dolphin on him Here, I'll get him sideways. Bail open. Woo. Yeah. All right, y'all. Check it out. We pulled up to this rig. 
third try of the night we found a ton of fish every cast it seems like off of the bow i'm getting a bite hooked up to this solid one these things are a ton of fun man and they are chewing that eight inch straight tail absolutely chewing it brandon hooked a big one again pulled hook again so we know that there's some big ones here we're seeing some monsters on the uh on the depth on the depth finder um man i'm fired up <laughs> a little bit anxious because i really want one of those big ones but stoked to be catching some fish man and it's a super cool bite it's just this thing is falling down man and you just feel poop and you set the hook and you're on here's the deal the last couple trips that i had out here we're seeing a lot of stuff on top but this trip most of the fish are staying down you see these red marks here this is kind of this is what we think is probably mainly tuna they are about 200 feet deep so these you know these heavier jig heads getting the baits down making the fish come up and eat them you know and maybe 100 150 is really what's been working so i mean it's it's pretty crazy to come out here and be like oh there they are drop down and sure enough hook up bro i haven't let one pull an inch all night i don't know what you're talking about that doesn't count <laughs> Come on. Dude, we got some big head shakes, boy. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Ryan. I don't know. The way it's on top, my friends, I think I might have a dolphin. I don't know. Whoa. Whoa. This is big, whatever it is, y'all. That's the fish? Come on now. Come on, Ryan. Do what you're supposed to do and catch up, baby. Yeah, no, I felt him turn around and shake his head. The initial bite, he just came straight towards the boat, you know, yeah. and just like ate it and just kept coming. Oh, that was a good run, y'all. That was a good run. I'm coming up. Watch that rod tip. Dance floor is yours, buddy. Oh my gosh. There's dolphins all around the boat. Don't make me feel good. Oh my god. Just broke, dude. Really? Yeah. No. Oh. That sucks. After losing probably the biggest fish hooked all night, we experienced four hours of some of the most fun fishing I've ever seen. All of us were hooking up, all on artificial. It was constant chaos, losing fish to porpoises, catching big fish. Man, it was a session that I'm never gonna forget. White. How's that? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's some meat, boys. Yeah, right there in the flesh. That specialty hook. Yes. This is essentially a gaff hook, y'all. We have been putting so much pressure on this hook 
and uh, really the only thing that's gotten messed up is the screw lock. It's the only thing to change. <laughs> but these things have been just getting the business. And they're still sharp as hell. We're catching multiple fish on these things, like probably like 10 fish on one of these things, and they still feel like they're new out of the box. It's a really good BKK hook, and you guys know I love my BKKs. Oil rig number 75 for the night. Um, probably some tunas here because every single one has had tunas. Just differs on how much they chew. But, see, these tunas are hungry. We are also really hungry. And we have some delicious tuna out here on the boat. So, my man Joe is gonna clean up one. We also have a little grill, so we're gonna cook one. So you guys are getting a catch, clean, and cook on the water in the middle of the video. So, special one for you guys. Mm -hmm. A lot of eggs. Here's the action. Go straight down to the bone. That's a lot about hearing and feeling the bone right there. So you can kind of see all that's bloodline right there. Right inside of that is gonna be your pin bones. You don't want any of that. I like to make a little incision right here. Most important part with these fish is their dorsal fin tucks all the way in. Their speed demons, everything is in line, tucks in, made to be bullet. However, this they have like a hard plate right here. It's pretty dang hard to cut through if you don't have a sharp knife or if you don't use a knife properly. It's very hard to do if your knife is like this, but if you keep it at a really, really steep angle, it makes it pretty dang easy to cut through just like that. You can kind of hear it wow. right there. That was just perfect. And so you're right on top of these. You're going to lay your knife flat also because it also keeps you on top of them. If you keep it, you know perpendicular to the fish then um, you have a chance of kind of like going underneath them and stuff like that so not fully detached so I'm gonna make a cut right there once again kind of listening for those bones then you're gonna come here detach the loin one more little cut I always miss this little corner right here for some reason and boom just like that you have a yeah. beautiful yellowfin tuna fillet Behold, YouTube, a tuna steak. You're about to throw said tuna steak on uh, a grill, and we're going to eat it, and then we're probably going to go to sleep. Ooh. Do a little flip Is that you doing? Uh, yeah, this guy was through, he was filleting fish, and suddenly he's hooked up again. What's going on here? Just business as usual. Oh, now he's getting cocky. Hooks, no, I'm not. Hooks one blue marlin. Gets cocky. <laughs> Blackfin. It's a little big. Catch. Clean. Yeah, let's do that over. Crook. <laughs> Straight tail. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. Chewing it. All righty, going on the grill. Yep. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, okay. That was the thing you have to do. That's all you need. That's all the stuff. All right, boys. Damn, that looks fine. You want to film it? I've been filming on the GoPro, my friend. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a bone in that one. Who filleted this thing? Oh, oh. We got the bladder. Hell yeah. Uh, bro. Ben's like, I'm so full, bro. I can't eat another bite. Hmm? Yeah, but then you do this. Yeah, you gotta try it at least, you know. Mm hmm. Huh? Call that hook to table. <laughs> this is your table. Piece of trash from the trash can. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We just crashed for a couple hours, and uh, I think we ended the night with, I don't know, 14, 15 solid tuna. Definitely a ton of fun catching them at the rigs. Now we're in an area where there has been a lot of bigger fish, fish over 100 pounds, and the sun is rising, obviously behind me, and as that sun rises, the fish are gonna start to feed on top. So we're pretty much just looking 
we're in the right area. We just have to find the fish blown up on top. Maybe we'll find some birds, help us out, help us find the fish. And hopefully we find the fish before the sharks because this area has a ton of sharks. But the main goal is to have a shot, have one of us have a shot at a true giant. And then I think it'll be a lot of teamwork to get that fish in because of how sharky this area is. We'll probably be handing off the rod a lot and try and get one of those monsters in the boat. So wish us luck and see what happens. We spent the next two, three hours riding around, and all we really saw were smaller tunas. We just couldn't seem to find those giants that we had been told were in the area. Give me that mid-morning update. What, what are we doing? What, why are we not catching tunas? What's up with this? So it's tuna fishing, and it makes you want to pull your hair out. Every day is very, <laughs> very different. Right here was uh, Nat Geo going on big tune is everywhere everyone hooking up today we've seen like a couple blackfin and that's it but you're, that say, you're mean... saying yesterday was like nat Geo. correct okay. and today is not nat Geo. today is like kind of boring but <laughs> it still might happen it might just be a little bit early well one of the more unique things about south louisiana north gulf is one of our closest fisheries is actually sword fishing so our closest swordfish spot is 15 miles out of south pass we are currently like two miles away from it right now. Had the fun idea to uh, catch one of these things on uh, eight inch straight tail. I think we definitely have a definite shot at it. There's a really good fishery here for the swords in terms of numbers. If you catch one over like 200 pounds, you're doing something big. If you catch a 300 pounder, I would say that's the equivalent of catching a nickel on the Atlantic side. We're gonna drop one of these things down. Uh, apparently the billfish like the straight tail white, we are going to use this gigantic BKK hook with a two ounce head. And we're gonna drop that sucker down and rip it around. So for those of you that have ever bass fished, we're essentially dropping a giant drop shot rig down there. Like this is just a drop shot rig meant for a swordfish. And the boys are confident it's gonna work. So I'm fired up. Yeah. I've never been on the boat when a swordfish has been caught. Really? I've never turned the handle on a swordfish in my life. Nope. So oh, right. a lot of cool stuff can happen right now. Oh, right. Some, cherries, some cherries can be popped on this boat. Ha! How you like me now? My man Joe went super in-depth with this rig, but I'm just going to give you guys a quick down and dirty. Basically, we used this piece of rebar with a coat hanger electric tape to it. That hook on the rebar hooks in to our bait. Now that's going to release once this rebar sticks into the mud on the bottom. Basically that tension of the mud, all we have to do is slack up and it's going to come undone. We also had a little light on the line and we clipped in another more permanent five pound weight that was going to keep our bait on the bottom and allow us to actually feel what's going on. We dropped that bad boy down 1500 feet and then once it hit the bottom, we were just chilling and waiting, watching the rod here, tip right? to see if we got a bite. Scope that bait out. <laughs> All right, that was just a bite for sure. Back to the no sword bait needed. This is how to turn your non electric reel into an electric reel and get it to the surface pretty darn quick. <laughs> Without spending $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> Like that. Beautiful. So we had one confirmed bite from a swordfish. We tried for another hour and a half to put a sword in the boat and unfortunately it just didn't happen. So we were on our way in. We pretty much thought the trip was over. Um, we had plenty of fish in the box, but we really didn't have that banner fish, you know, that one that just set itself apart from all the rest. And then suddenly Bob stopped the boat. Okay, so we were actually on our way in, but then we just pulled up to an area where there's a bunch of bait, a bunch of birds, and a few people fishing. Um, we, so we got plenty of live baits left. Just threw some live baits out. We're marking some stuff. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, now we're marking them. That's them. Big ones? They're coming up. I'm gonna throw some bait. Yeah, dude, that's gotta be them. Throw some bait. For the next 20 minutes, we bumped around this area, staying out of the way of other people that had already been fishing, but we were finding fish exploding on the baits on the surface. So we were throwing as much live chum as we could. And y'all, I wish you could have seen the things that we saw because these fish were all over 100 pounds, some up to 200 pounds. We were able to capture one shot 
and just enjoy it. Look at this thing. So this is what I saw. I casted at this giant fish that had exploded. I thought I was for sure gonna hook up, but it wasn't me that hooked up. Oh, Watch out, go, jump go, your rod. Go, 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 go. Oh my God. Joe. That was crazy. Watch out, watch out. We get we can't cast real up. Go on, another one. Yeah. Go, go on to John's boat. We gotta get after this fish. They gotta stay straight up and down on it. Alright. Look at that back rod. Talk to me, Joe. There's a lot of bait rod out. I know I got you. Going straight to his boat. Off his bow. Fort. Woo! Coming right at him. Going underneath his boat. Woo -hoo. Let's go, Joe. Good job, Joe. Real, 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 real. Yee! Coming slow. No, he's still on. Come on, y'all. Still on. Oh, we got him. Hope good, boys. Nice reeling, Joe. Stop. Neutral. Talk to me. Reverse. Your God, he's good. Oh, I gotta see him now. The man, the myth, the legend. Pretty good. You, dude, you might have him at 70 foot. I do. Yeah, you do. Woo! Pulling on him, boy. Came up and smoked that lure right next to the boat. That was beautiful. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so Joe hooked this fish on my setup. And let me tell you guys, he put way more heat on this fish than I would have personally, but I guess he's just got experience knowing that these fish get sharp. So he was doing everything he could to prevent it. I can't believe how well this line held up. This PE5 Silk Ocean that I have my rod spooled with, or this reel spooled with, man, it was absolutely taking a beating and whooping this big fish. This man said yesterday, he's like, this is my favorite time of year to fish. He's out here pulling on a sud. Collar. Collar. Get that harpoon ready? Here we go, guys. Other side. Be careful, he don't take the under. Hold he's on. right, he's about to rub. Oh! Hit him again! Get the other gas in him! Get the other big one! Get the other gas in him! Yeah. Thanks guys, good job! Yeah! Yeah! Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of they need it, baby! Nice job, Joe! Wait a that's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. That was the one. Should we go check out what's going on over there? <laughs> should right, we? You should always side. check it out. All right, guys. Come up, ready? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Woo! 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 There's a real one, boys. Let's go. There's a real one. Show my There's a real one. Dude, down the hatch, boy. Down the hatch. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Look at that. Look at how far down it chokes that enemy in. Absolutely. Dude, what? I'm, I'm in disbelief. I think that's the way to say it. What the hell is even that? I, <laughs> I can see the jetty. We're literally almost all the way in, and we find the biggest fish that we found all trip. Everyone's fishing live bait. 
We're all throwing lures. We had one live bait that didn't get hit. My man Joe stroked one. Stud of a fish. Absolutely insane. White marlin. What the and we just had a white marlin come up That's to the boat. One, and I think someone else had caught a white marlin here. Joey, help him get it up. Hey. Hey. All right, we just got back to the marina. I'm guessing that fish weighs 120 pounds. Everyone else has guessed other weights. We're gonna put that big fish on the scale, see how much it weighs. We also have a ton of work to do, a ton of cleaning, a ton of unpacking. What'd you say? 132. 132, you heard it here first. Brandon's confident. <laughs> Up, Look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, a couple tunas there, sir. A couple. All in a day's work. That was sick. Okay, let's come over here. See what we're working with. Joe just stuffed a bunch of leads in its mouth because he said it was 140 pounds. He's going walleye style. <laughs> 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 I caught him. Thank you. You guys heard it here first. 120 Thank was you. my guess. Yeah, you got it. All right. I nailed it. I guess like I added 18 pounds to him. Think hey man, you had to fight him though. That's my back, thing. my back feels it a little bit more. I'll tell you guys what. This marina is lit right now. The amount of people that are here, the amount of boats coming in, bringing out awesome catches. The inshore guys with a bunch of redfish, snappers, and stuff like that. Offshore guys bringing in tunas. We just had another boat pull up with three yellowfins, probably all over 120 pounds. It's crazy. We're going to clean one of these up right now. Joe's actually going to cut the big one and I'm going to film it. And he's going to talk you guys through how he does it. All right, boys and girls, Joe VT in the flesh. The man that'll pick up your rod, catch a tuna on it, and steal your girl all on the same day. <laughs> all right. Are you going to include the, the little one too? Might as well. Come on, watch. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do it all. Yep. All right. So, same thing. Bigger fish. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> one bite. Everyone knows the rules. Wow. Back to this. So, as I was saying last night, this hard plate is uh, very, very hard on these fish. So, yeah, you can't really hear it. But uh, it's it's really hard. So you definitely have to keep the angle of the knife super steep. So same thing, just a little bit of a bigger fish. Not very good for your knife, but you just kind of have to do it. It do be what you got to do. Now that you got it all separated. Damn, look at that slab of meat, son. It do be a slab. Throw that on a cracker. We got a lot. We got a big cracker. All right, we're almost fully. All right, we're almost fully disconnected. Oh, look at that side of beef. So a 25, 30 pound tuna line looks like, folks. How about that? That's fun. All right. Very yes, good. Sir. All right, we got a lot of fish to clean. <laughs> so I'm gonna put Ryan to work. I'm gonna pull Ryan here for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like people are Number two, son. Oh, yes. Slap on slap. How about that? Good cut, bro. Alright. Now we got 20 more to play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. 
time's sake, I'm gonna help Joe out. We'll clean these up, get them more table ready when we have a chance, but we gotta get these things on ice, so. Maybe you guys will see some B-roll, maybe you won't. All right, shout out to our boy Victor. I think all of his rods are <laughs> not coming back the same the way they came. The reels are fine. <laughs> all right everyone that was one heck of a trip i'm gonna see you guys back at my house in florida i don't know 24 36 48 hours from now so let's just go ahead and teleport right now welcome back to florida we have so much tuna i gave away a ton to my dad gave away a ton to my family christina and i are going to be making some sushi tonight so you guys are going to come along for the ride for sushi night so this is kind of what the tuna looks like coming out of the bag. Big old chunks, and I'm gonna kind of clean it up, make sure that there's no scales on it, and really all I'm doing is paper toweling it off. Not washing it off, because once you put fresh water on tuna, it really starts to degrade it, and it starts to not taste good at all. Um, kind of ruins the consistency and everything. So paper toweling it off, making sure there's no scales on it, getting rid of any little bits of bloodline, and then I'll have it cut thinly into strips for our sushi rolls, and you guys are gonna see how we make those in a few seconds. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is my beautiful girlfriend, Christina. This is our house. It's actually been like an hour and a half since we filmed the last clip because Christina's parents showed up to give them some tuna and then we entertained for a while. But we're here now. Christina's gonna show you guys how to make some sushi rolls because she says I always do it wrong. I don't believe her, but I think she might be a little better than me. So I'm taking my um, paper, dipping my hands in some water. That is called a nori roll for you all uncultured people like me. I always have struggle finding it. The sushi rice I made, it's a little bit different than normal rice. You can find it in like the, you know, the international section, but it's a little bit different consistency, a little stickier. And I also add things like rice wine vinegar, sugar, and salt to it to kind of season it properly. And you dip your hands so it spreads easy. Yeah, otherwise it would just stick all to your fingers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 15 hours later, um, she's got the whole thing perfectly covered in rice. Now I'm going to flip her over because I'm making an outside or an inside out roll. An outside in, inside out? Yeah, something like that. So I'm taking my, actually I want better, better piece. Thick boy. Yeah, I'm taking this one. A piece of onion, green onion. I'm gonna take some avocado. Okay, so I'm adding just a string of cream cheese on here. And then, I don't really want anything else in this at the moment. And I'm gonna start rolling. And you wanna pull towards you and down and just kind of seal it. That first roll is really important. And then we're gonna just do another roll. And I like to um, wrap our bamboo in a Ziploc bag so it doesn't stick. And one last roll. And we don't need these end pieces. They'll just get cut off in any case. Winner for the chef. Yes. Easy there. So that's good. And then we will saran wrap this one. Now we're gonna make a normal one, so I'm gonna grab another seaweed, nori seaweed roll and do the same thing. Just put a very thin layer of rice. You want help? No. Why not? Because I think we have all agreed that I'm much better than you at rolling. Who's we? Me, you, Victor, Brooke. My YouTube subscribers? Yes. <laughs> I never thought I would get roasted so much on my own channel, but uh, it happens a lot these days. Only because I love you. Hmm. That might be the first time you've said that on YouTube. 
Alright, taking some cucumber. That's not a cucumber. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Green onion. Oh, I forgot to put cucumber in the last one. Oh well. Okay, well, I'll put some cucumber in this one. Let me stretch this little thing out. Works better when it's cold, but uh, again, Christina's parents uh, hung out for a lot longer than we expected. <laughs> And she was a great host, made them two sushi rolls, we gave them a giant bag of tuna, and then they got out of here. They elected to not be in the video. Ooh, look at that. A little cucumber action. Mm -hmm. Nice old chunky yellow fin. Can you get on one of those? Maybe a thick boy. All right, and we're making our first roll. This is where we just hold our breath and pray it doesn't fall out. Oh, what do you mean? It's perfect, you're a pro now. <laughs> you're ready to work in a sushi restaurant. Yep. Look at that. Things tight as a Cuban cigar. Mm. Wow, hold her up, let's see that. Wow, look at that thing. We were just jamming out in here with the whole sushi assembly line going on, but we don't want to get demonetized on this video. So, show you guys the next step. We essentially wrapped all of the sushi rolls in saran wrap. And the main reason that you do this is because when you go to cut the sushi rolls, they kind of want to fall apart on you, but the saran wrap helps hold them all together. So we have our sushi roll wrapped in saran wrap so it doesn't fall apart on us when we go to cut it. Real sharp knife. And then we just Kind of cut it apart. I kind of, I typically will just go down the middle and I'll actually rinse my knife in between cuts because the rice and everything wants to kind of stick to it. Bam, just like that. So again, just cut them. I just kind of cut them into halves till we get proper bite size. And I know these are big bites, but these are nice. And then the ends are not as pretty. This is what I do. So with the ends, the ends aren't as pretty. So, unwrap them, and before they make it to the plate. So we just unwrap the saran wrap. Bang. And then we go in for the plating. And now for my favorite part, the decorating. So we really should have put the seeds on before we did it, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna sprinkle them on there, like so. Nice. They look like bugs. Oh, they don't look like bugs, they look like sesame seeds. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take some spicy mayo. And just drizzle her on there. Nice. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some of this eel sauce mm -hmm. and do the same thing. What is eel sauce? Um, it is mirin, brown sugar, and soy sauce cooked down. And these are just crunchy onions. I'm taking some shredded imitation crab and just placing it over the, um, one of the rolls. This one's just gonna have just this and some of the crab again. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> I was making it look pretty. There you are. You don't need two of them. Wow. What is that? A wasabi star? Yeah. Beautiful. Just to symbolize my love for you. <laughs> the best heart I've ever seen. All right, are you ready to eat? Mm -hmm. I'm ready to eat. I'm excited. This is pretty much as fresh as it gets, caught like 36 hours ago. So, ready to dig in. What are you doing? I'm decorating. Oh, more decorating. Behind the scenes decorating. <laughs> okay, so she's gone. Awesome dinner. Also, got an awesome lunch ready for tomorrow. So, huge thank you to Christina who's now studying in the background. She's got a test coming up soon. But a huge thank you to you guys and thank you to NLBN for making this trip happen. And it was just an awesome experience to get out there, see those giant tunas, see the oil rigs. It always is and I can't wait to get back out there. So I will be seeing you guys in that next video. But if you can't wait, 
if you can't wait for another video, check out this one right here, and I promise you'll like that as well. See you guys over there.